Thanks, Thank you. Uh, Ken Carla. Um, well, first of all, I just wanted to respond to some points that I heard being made in the debate earlier. Um, one was the first point I wanted to react to was. Uh, both deputies John Paul Phelan and Brandon Griffin talked about the need to couple Dáil reform uh, with reform of the electoral system. And I just want to say that I fundamentally disagree with that. Um, I mean, I think the point needs to be repeated again and again that any other electoral system other than PRS TV in multi-seat constituencies would give the voter in Ireland less say. Um, you know, when you talk about uh, single-seat constituencies, it means that the, that favours the bigger parties and it gives less, uh, you know, it's very much winner takes all. It's not much better than first past the post, um, you know, so it means that uh, smaller parties and the people who vote for them would um, find it less to, uh, hard to get people elected into the Dáil. Um, if you talk about list systems, it's basically where we would be basically imposing on the Dáil exactly what we criticise the Shannon for, and we would have, un you know, basically unelected people appointed by party leaders uh, with no need to go towards before the people, uh, you know, at the ballot box. And I mean, that's the thing about our system is individual people and not just political parties are held accountable by the voter at the ballot box. And I think we would be mad to move away from that. Um, I think it's totally misguided to think that our problems in this country were caused by ele our electoral system. You know, it wasn't, you know, that's basically saying the voters, uh, you know, shouldn't be trusted to vote for their own representatives. Um, you know, democracy isn't perfect, as has been said, but it's better than all of these other systems. And in, 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 in the other side of it, is a, it is a wonderful system. System, and it's just spoken in, in relation to the last election. And you know, it wasn't you know this idea that somehow it was a person going to a TD's clinic, uh, you know, that's the cause of all our problems with the banks. It wasn't the person on social welfare going to the, the, the TD in a constituency clinic that caused our problems. And they're not the people that should be taken out of the equation. It was the bankers in the middle of the night going to a minister totally accountable and looking for a bank guarantee. And it was the lobbyists totally unregulated looking for tax breaks and develop for developers. Uh, you know, and so on. That's where the problem lies, and that's where the reform is needed. Um, you know, people talk about mixed electoral systems. Again, you in in other countries where they have that, it's a problem. You have a two-tier system of members of parliament, and the public think that the constituency elected MPs are the real ones. And that was found in research carried out in Wales, where a commission there a few years ago recommended actually moving to PRS TV and what we have. And similarly, in other countries, the civic campaigns are to bring in PRS TV and multi-seat constituencies because it's the most democratic and proportionate of elect electoral systems in practice in the world today. So I would absolutely defend PRS TV and you know I'm proud to have been elected in that way. It's a hard way to get elected but it gives the voter the ultimate say in relation to who sits in the stall. Um, in relation to gender quotas, I, I fundamentally disagree with gender quotas. What gender quotas would mean in practice is under our constitution at present you cannot prevent someone from putting forward to their name for election on the basis of gender and no woman has ever been told they can't put their name forward for an election because they're a woman but a gender quota in practice would mean that men would be told no you can't put your name forward and people can't vote for you because you're a man that is not the way to deal with the issue of women uh, not uh, participating in politics there is there is an issue about women not there, there's no difficulty as people have said in terms of women getting elected and there's no problem women are get winning selection conventions so that's not the problem either. There is a need to get more women active in political parties um, and you know, the, the, and to, to want to run for election. And if you start making top-down uh, selection of candidates the way that candidates are selected through the imposition of gender quotas, and have no doubt about it, party leaderships will then make sure they impose their gender quota against the people they don't want, and they won't impose it against the people they do want when it comes down to it. Uh, you know, it is very much a top-down uh, selection of candidates. It takes away the right for for uh, people themselves to decide whether they want to go forward for a selection, and it takes away the right of the members to pick um, their, their, their candidates. Uh, you know, so it's fundamentally undemocratic, and if we really want more women in politics, we have to make our parties more democratic and stop the tendency to move away from party members making decisions about matters such as, as this. So I am fundamentally opposed to um, gender quotas, and I think the point needs to be made. There are different opinions on gender quotas, and many women hold in 
political parties and outside of political parties are against gender quotas and some men are for gender quotas and that's freedom of speech because if we do want more women in politics we want women who will express their own opinion and be entitled to say what they think in relation to debates like this because very often you have the likes of the National Women's Council you know basically tarnishing women just because they express a different view to them on this issue and making derogatory comments about us so uh, I think that's unacceptable. The real issue for uh, Dáil reform for me is how the Dáil operates. I thought John, uh, the former uh, Taoiseach John Briefen put it best. What we need here is to shift the balance back to the backbencher and the, order, and the opposition TD in this House and any moves we make need to be about that and uh, there is a lot to be desired in terms of the way uh, parliamentary questions are still being answered in this House in that regard and the other side of it is we need to deal with the empty chamber syndrome. The whips tell us to be down when it's leaders questions or Taoiseach's questions. They should be making us down if you're down here, here so we can listen to each other talk about this very important issue and have a proper debate where you listen to what one pe person says and you either disagree or, disagree or, or, or agree with them. That's a proper debate and that's one of the issues that needs to be addressed. Thank, Thank you. you Deputy.